There's no, I, you know, I really didn't plan it out like that necessarily. Um, it just happened to fall on that day, and but that's good. I'm glad we were able to do it today. It was good, and and that you, they did a wonderful job presenting it. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word today? Yeah. I said, are you ready for the word today? Yeah. All right, all right. Y'all gonna help me out today because you know we're missing a bunch of people, but I'm gonna still need your amens. Amen. I still need your shouts. I still you need your praises. I still need your worships. I still need your your go ahead, Pastor. Okay, I need all that. So I have a word today. Stretch your hands out forward towards me if you will. Father God, we come to you today. We thank you for this time of, of remembrance. We thank you for Memorial Day. God, I, I, God again, and I know I pray this is the beginning of service, but God, I'm so thankful for these people that came out today, each and every one of them. On this side over here, the band, Jasmine in the back, the praise team, the people in the middle section, the people over here, the ushers, Rick and Harlan and Clemente, all, I am so thankful, God. I am thankful for each and every one of them who came out, God, because there's many that could have came but did not can't come. And I am so thankful for these that did come. That said, I have to be in the presence of God today. I need something to keep me going another week. To keep me going. It's not, I can't, I can't miss a week and then, and then come back. God, I, I thank you for them. I thank you, God. I ask for a, a blessing upon their life even this week. Just from their obedience to get in the house of the Lord, Father God. I pray for a supernatural blessing for them, Father God, today. When others could. They did, and I thank you for that, God. God, I ask that you will just move upon this word today. I ask, Father God, that I know you've given this word to speak, and what an awesome day it is to speak this word, and it's going right along with the theme of, of Memorial Day. But God, I thank you, Father God, for, for that, that it's not going to fall upon deaf ears, but when we leave here in just a little bit, we'll leave refreshed, revived, renewed, restored, rejuvenated. And ready to go forward to fulfill our destiny, our call, and our purpose, God. I ask that you move upon the people's lives today. Anoint their ears to hear, their eyes to see, their minds to understand. And most importantly, above all, their hearts to receive what you're speaking in this place. That you be lifted up and you be glorified. God, we didn't come in here, as Carla said. She said, we didn't come in here to play church, God. We are the church, amen? We came in here to be the church. I'm tired of people playing church. We are the church, and we're going to be the church, God. Help us, God, to take this word out to these four, out of these four walls into this city that needs the word of God like never before. God, I bless you. I thank you that you will increase as I decrease in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today, amen. Let's give the word a hand of praise. Come on. Let's give the word a hand Amen. If you're thankful to be in the house of the Lord today, give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Today, my message is going to be a little bit different. First of all, I'm not going to keep you long. We're not going to be in here long. It's going to be one of my shorter messages. No, I don't want to hear nobody clap for that whatsoever. Nobody better clap. Amen. Nobody better clap. Amen. It's going to be one of my... Well, let me wait for that. It's, it's supposed to be one of my full shorter messages. Okay? That's what it's supposed to be. No, but seriously, it's kind of a different message. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, 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 different, a different type of anointing. There's a little bit of teaching, a little bit of... Uh, and then we'll have some preaching. But, but I believe God has truly placed this word on my spirit today for those of us that are here. Amen. Uh, um, I want to talk to you today. The name of the message is quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's talking to you. Quitting isn't an option. You can't quit on this. You can't quit on that. And you certainly can't quit on me. But more than that, you can't quit on God. Amen. Amen. Quitting is not an option. Today I want to talk to you about removing the option of quit out of your life. Sometimes we feel like giving up. Sometimes we feel like throwing in the towel. Sometimes we feel like I just can't keep on going anymore. Sometimes we feel I'm talking to the sanctified church today because none of y'all ever felt that. Sometimes you feel like I just can't keep doing it anymore. I can't keep on keeping on. We feel like throwing in the white towel. We feel like saying, ah, forget it. I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, but the Bible said we are not a people who retreat and give up during the battles. Did you know that? 
Did y'all know the Bible says we are not, God didn't create people who give up and retreat during the battle. See, when you were drafted, which means when you accepted Jesus as your personal savior, you signed up on a winning team. Amen. Now we know coach back there knows about a winning team with his state championship runner-up trophy this year. But I'm here to tell you, on coach's team, he don't have no losers on your team. Right, coach? But even more than that, on Jesus' team, we are all winners. Do you hear me today? We are all winners. And when you sign up and when you got drafted and when you were the top pick in the draft of the whatever year you got saved draft I'm here to tell you that you did not sign up to retreat we signed up to press forward we signed up to keep on going we signed up when half your church doesn't show up that I'm still going to preach I'm still going to lay it out I'm still going to ha- get people shouting and praising God because I am not a quitter because I don't lay down and say oh well hey it's not going so well I'm just going to give up no because God didn't put no quit inside of me. And if God didn't put quit inside of me, he didn't put quit inside of you. Do you hear me today? And the Bible clearly says we are not a people who retreat. We are not a people that give up during battles. In fact, during battles, we don't run from the battle. We run towards the battle because we are equipped with everything we need to be winners. Do you hear me? You are equipped with the sword of the spirit. You are equipped with the, the breastplate of righteousness. You are equipped. Do you understand? You're equipped with the, the helmet of salvation. You are equipped for battle and if you just run the other way you are going to get hit from behind and you'll never make it to your appointed destination but I'm here to tell you if the battle is upon you then God is about to move for you because the culture you are to battle is the culture you are to victory I'm going to say that again because you didn't hear me if without a battle there's no victory I'm going to say it again because I like it without a battle there's no victory if you don't go through battles and you don't go through situations that you want to throw in the towel and you want to give up and you want to say this isn't working for me then you'll never experience the victory on the other side but I'm looking at some people today that will say I've been through some battles I've been through some wars I've been through some wear and tear and I know that if I'm going through the battle and I'm still standing the victory is on the other side of this thing do you hear me today? This message today is one that is really, truly needed to be heard. It's truly needed to be heard. This message needs to be heard. It it, it needs to be heard by many people today that are in a season that they are in right now. Now, there's some of you, God sent me here to preach this message for a reason. And there's some people here, and I know it on my heart, that God, you know, you, you, you've been in a season where you just want to give up. I'm not saying you want to give up and not be a Christian anymore. I'm not saying that somebody, it might be true. But for some of you, you want to give up on the dreams and the visions and the promises that God has told you. You want to give up on relationships and marriages. You want to give up on jobs and opportunities. You want to give up on family and friends. You want to give up on children that you say, I just can't, nothing's going to, nothing's going to turn out good with this. You want to give up. And some of us are going through that today. If we're being honest in here, if we're being real and transparent in here, we want to give up on things that we want to say, I I just can't keep on going. And this message needs to be heard by many people today that are in a season like that right now. Some people may feel like quitting on their marriage. Some people may feel like quitting on their faith. Some people may quit feel like quitting on God. Some people may feel like quitting on giving and tithing. Some people may feel like quitting on on, on their pastor. Some people may feel like quitting on, on their praise team. Some people may feel like quitting on, on their job and on their bosses. Some people may feel like quitting. Some people are just tired of the battle. Some people are just tired of the struggle. But this is a message that is a must hear for anyone that may feel like that today. This is a message that is a must heal hear for someone that is battling something. And you're battling an addiction. And time after time after time. And you think you got it overcome. I'm going to preach real today. Maybe there's only a few of us here. But I'm going to be real. And you think that you got an addiction over. And you think you've overcome it. And then it comes up and it, it shows its nasty head again. And you got to go. And you just feel like saying, oh, it's not even worth it trying to fight this thing. It's not even worth it trying to fight this nicotine. It's not even worth it trying to fight this alcohol. It's not even worth it trying to fight this weed. It's not even worth it trying to fight this or fight that. It's not even worth it trying to fight this gambling. It's not even worth it trying to fight anymore. I just want to give up. I'm just going to surrender. But I'm here to tell you today that God didn't make no losers on his team. And I'm telling you, inside of you is victory. Inside of you is strength and power. Inside of you is is another day to keep on pressing on. Here's the problem. Many people are so focused on getting through until ne- they're like uh, about next week and next month. And that. You just need to focus on getting through today. 
The Bible says if you'll get through today, I'll give you new mercies every day. I'll give you new strength every day. See, people are so concerned about what's a year going to hurt from now? Where am I going to be in five years? How are we going to do this in ten years? What about two years, two months? No, you need to worry about two hours. Then you need to worry about two more hours. Then you need to worry about two more hours. How am I going to get through this day? And if you make it through this day, I'm here to tell you, I'm looking at people like one of you dead. So no matter what you faced, you've made it through it. No matter what you've gone through, you've made it through it on the other side. You've been victorious. Do you hear me today? You've made it through. And if you made it through that trial and you made it through that tribulation, quitting is not an option in what you're going through today. And you've got to keep on keeping on. Do you hear me today? Hallelujah. This message is what God is going to use to strengthen you in your mind. This message is what God is going to use to strengthen you in your heart, to strengthen you in your determination, to get you that strength back. How many of you just need some strength back? How many of you need anybody in here just need to get some strength back? Anybody need to get some joy back? Anybody need to get some hope back? Anybody need to get their vision back? Anybody need to get their promises back? Anybody need to get their stuff back? Anybody need to get anything back in their life? Like, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to get mine back. I'm going to get my peace back. I'm going to get my strength back. I'm going to get my joy back. I'm going to get my hope back. I'm going to get my, 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 my relationships back. And this is for those of us who got to get something back. Because we lost it along the way somehow, some way. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you not saved. It doesn't make you mean that you, you, you don't love God. It means somewhere between here and there, you lost it a little bit. But the good thing about losing stuff is we serve the God who is the founder because he found you in the miry clay, because he found you in the pit, because he found you in the mess, because he found you in problems, because he found you in circumstances. And God is a finder. And when he finds us, he raises us up. Because when, it, when it's all said and done, we're not talking about human ability or human power or human willpower. When it's all said and done and when you remove the quit option, you get into the presence of God. And you get into the heart of God. And he fills you with his promises. And he fills you with his joy. And he fills you with his peace. And he fills you with his hope. And then you can get up and keep on going. And then you can get up and go out and, and see God's will done in your life. See, some of us today, we feel like just throwing in the towel. Some of us today, we feel like, ah, oh, I'm done with this. I can't keep doing this. Can't keep going on like this. Don't want to do it anymore. But I'm here to tell you, it's time now more than ever to press on. Because the devil wouldn't be attacking you so bad. Do you hear me today? The devil wouldn't be attacking you so bad if you didn't have something that was precious inside of you. If you didn't have a victory on the other side of this thing. The enemy is attacking you because he knows when you get through this thing. Mm, when you get through this thing, he knows what's on the other side. There's a book, and it's called Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor is written by a, a Navy SEAL named Marcus Luttrell. Lone Survivor was written by Marcus Luttrell. This goes perfect with Memorial Day. He was a Navy SEAL, and this book is about a battle that took place in Afghanistan in 2006. And this, this battle became the deadliest day in the history of the Navy SEALs. This battle that took place in 2006 became the battle that became the deadliest in the history of the Navy SEALs. At this date, over 20 of our Navy SEALs were killed. And then there was a helicopter that came in trying to rescue them and get them out of this fight. And there was only 20 of them, but there was over 150 Taliban soldiers. And the helicopter that was coming to rescue these 20 Navy SEALs was shot down. And everybody in that helicopter was killed. So this day in 2006 became, six became the deadliest day in the history of the Navy SEALs. That day, 20 men were killed. And the author of the book that, was, that named Marcus Luttrell, who was the lone survivor, the only survivor, that's why it's called lone survivor, the only Navy SEAL that survived this. But in this book, he takes the first few chapters of this book and he begins to go into detail about a unique training involving our Navy SEAL. He talks about if they have a desire and they are able to qualify for the, for, for to be, take the test just to go forward with the Navy SEALs and they pass the first round of testing, that then they are sent off to Coronado Beach in California. 
He said that there in Coronado Beach, they began a two-month rigorous training. He said it was a training like nothing you could ever think, you could ever imagine, you could ever even uh, think in your mind's eye. He said the process which they put their bodies basically through misery, basically through hell, basically through so much pain and torture that you want to just quit and give up. It is designed, this beach at Cor this Coronado Beach and the Navy SEALs training is designed to weed out those who are not strong enough to continue on. It is designed to weed out those who are not the best of the best. Navy SEALs are the best of the best in, in the Navy. They're the best of the best. That's the, like the, 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 um, the Green Berets or the Rangers or whatever. These are the best of the best are the Navy SEALs. And, and, and he, said, he said it's designed to weed them out. And they go through this process. In fact, once you make it through it, if you make it through it, it's said that out of the 150 two-thirds, 150 will go to this training. Two-thirds of the 150 give up. Two-thirds of the 150 that go through this training never make it to the next test, never make it through. They give up. After you go through two months, then you go through a real test. And that real test is literally known, and the name of it is Hell Week. That's what it's called. It's called Hell Week. They begin to run for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. And they go into the sea in rafts and they are not allowed to eat hardly anything for four days stuck in a raft. Can't eat anything. They don't have anything with them. They just have to survive on whatever they can fish out of the ocean. They are stuck on these rafts for four days. They are sleep deprived. They're not. They try to. They try to go to sleep. The, the the instructors are there blowing the whistles and yelling the the horns and making them wake up. They are not allowed to go to sleep. They are made to go into the ocean at 60 degrees, so it's free, pretty cold. 60 degrees is pretty cold water. They have to live in that for four days, basically. And one of the instructors that Marcus Luttrell talks about in this book, Long Survivor, it, it, it made this comment. He said, what we are after is your mind. Your body can put up with a lot if you've been trained. But what we're after is your mind. I want you to think about that again, because I'm going somewhere, obviously. What we are after is your mind. Your body can put up with a lot of mess, but if we can get your mind, we can mess you up. Remember, they had been trained for two months before this hell week. So two months they went through training before this, right? So they're gone through training for two months before this hell week to withstand a lot of pain. So they're, they're, they're Michelle, they, they've gone through it. They, uh, Hogan, they, Terry, they've gone through it. Clemente, they, 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 they're, they're, they're battle ready. They've gone through too much, Carla. So they've gone through too much of, of being, being, you know, uh, basically abused, basically, you know, uh, uh, talked down to, basically, um, you know, just, just ripped everything out from under them. And then now they're going into the worst part after after two months of already rigorous and difficult training, now you're going into hell week. The instructor said, we are after your mind. What we are trying to do is break your mind. What we are trying to do is break your mind. Also, there's this little bell, and I know this is a pathetic excuse for a bell, but this is all I can find. Mine and Mia's wedding bell. And one of, we have these uh, little favors, aren't they so cute? Favors on our little wedding, ta on, on our reception. But they have this little bell. No, not a big bell. They have this big bell. And if at any time while you're going through hell week, if things get really bad, that you can't stand it anymore, and you can't take the pressure anymore, and you can't do it anymore. The pressure is so much. The soreness, TJ, is so difficult. Kathy, the, 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 the agony, the despair, Coach Kim, the, 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 the problem, Samantha, the, the issues. You just, you just want to get a good meal. You just want to get done with this, Sally. I can't take it anymore. Jasmine, I need out of this. If at any time you want to get out of this, when the pressure is too much, the, the body is aching too much, and you can't stand it any longer, and you're, you're tired of being screwed. Screamed at, and you're tired of being humiliated, and you're tired of being ripped down to nothing, and, and, and you're tired of getting yelled at by these instructors. If at some point you just can't take it physically, and you can't take it emotionally, there is this bell hanging outside of the dining hall, and all you have to do is to go up and ring the bell. 
and you ring the bell, and when you ring the bell, you, you fall out of rank, which means you fall out of a line, you fall out of rank, you go over there, and if you ring the bell, you don't have to say anything to your instructor. You don't have to say anything to the, 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 the other Navy SEALs that are going through the training. You don't have to do anything. They said, all you have to do is ring the bell. And in ringing the bell, you are exercising your quit option. When you ring this bell, you're saying, I give up. I quit. I can't do this anymore. In doing so, you take your helmet off and you sit down there. And at that moment, Big Fever, at that moment, you don't have to explain anything. Some of you don't have to. They're not going to come up to you and, and bother you and say, what are you doing? And get on you. They're not going to say anything. They're not going to do anything. What they're going to do, they're going to say, okay, you're fine. You can go have a shower. You can go rest up. You don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to justify your actions. No questions will be asked. No ridicule will happen. They said you go into the barracks. They take a warm shower. You can then be fed a hot, delicious meal. A bus will take you back to wherever you came from. No questions will be asked. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen to you. And this book tells of this young man who had been with him, with Marcus Luttrell, for the whole two months. And he had emerged somehow as the leader of the group. He had emerged somehow as the toughest of the tough, the biggest, the baddest, the strongest, the one that everybody looked at, Christine, they said, Elrond, this guy is the one. This is the one that's going to make it through, Cody. This is the one, Kim, that's Desiree, that's going to make it through. This is the one. If any of these Navy SEALs are going to quit, it's not going to be this guy. This guy will go through. And he'd emerged as the elite soldier. He'd emerged in everyone's mind as the leader of the group. And Marcus Luttrell said, if ever there was a soldier, this man was a soldier. He said, if ever there was anyone you wanted in a foxhole beside you, this young man was that kind of leader. He was physically stronger than everyone else. He was, he was, he was uh, more mature than everyone else. And they all knew that one day, this young man would be a great commander in the armed forces. They all know that one day this man was going to be what, what, what these generals, what these commanders, what all these guys were out here. They knew he was going to be something great. But by the fifth day of Hell Week, Rita, they were all stunned to see him break rank, walk over to the bell, and begin to ring the bell. And as this man was walking over, he said, he told one of his instructors, Marcus Luttrell told one of his instructors, he said, please, he said, please, please, let me talk with him. He said, he's out of his mind. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. He, he's delirious, Canna. He's not thinking straight, Aja. Uh, 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 Veronica, he, he's crazy. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's been sleep deprived, Carla. Uh, Kenna, he hasn't eaten. Uh, Mia, he doesn't know what he's doing. Good, please, let me go talk to this guy. I'm telling you, he's the best out of all of us. We've trained with him. We've seen him. We know what he can do. He just hasn't slept for days. He hasn't eaten for days, Terry. Cody, he's just tired. Don't you understand? Please, he's having a breakdown. He's the best soldier in this entire unit every soldier knows that out here please let me stop him please let me go talk to him and this instructor told him he said this and I think this is so good he said Marcus in all of our experiences if ever a man headed to the bell and you talked them out of it and they came back out of all of our experiences we've never had one who didn't eventually go back and ring the bell. And never will they be able to finish this program. The instructor went on to say, they never make it to the end, and this is so good. They never make it to the end, Summer, because in their minds, they crossed a place where they decided to give up. Oh, Jesus. At this time, Heartland, that, that gives me chills. Because see, once your mind crosses that place that I'm not going over, that's why you got to guard your mind. That's why you can't just let anybody speak nonsense into your life. That's why you do need church. Do y'all hear me? That's why you need to be here every time the doors are open so that you can get that word inside of you because the devil's not worried about your body because he knows your body can take the abuse. Your body can take the pain. But if your mind can cross over to that deep, dark place, once you made up your mind, you're not coming back. My God. The instructor said never, that, that he'll never make it because in his mind he crossed to a place where they decide, he'd already decided to give up. And it doesn't matter how much you try to talk to him out of it, he will eventually give up again. I believe today, 
I believe today we need to understand what he got a hold of that day. We need to understand in our mind. He said it was that day. Marcus said it was that day he watched this young soldier man who had so much stronger, who had so much potential, who, who was tougher, stronger, a better fighter, physically more gifted, could bench press more, could run more, could do more. He looked like the Navy SEAL. He looked like Chris Kyle. He, he was the tough one. He was the one that could do it. I knew he was the one to do it. He said, it was that day when I watched this young man walk over and ring that bell and exercise the option of quitting. He said, it was that day I realized it wasn't a physical battle that we are fighting out here on this beach. It's not a physical battle. Don't miss where I'm going, guys. It's not a physical. Y'all are tough. Y'all can, can endure a lot. Some of you have endured more than most people would ever endure in their life. Some of you were raised, had uh, no place to live when you were growing up. Some of you have had your electricity cut off and didn't know where your next food meal was going to come from. Some of you have been in, in, you know, in fights. Some of you grew up maybe in gangs and, and you were close to death and you've been shot at. You've been in fights. You've been stabbed. I don't know what your story is. Some of you have been in the military. and I, you know, Some of you have probably seen things that most of us could never imagine or never, never think of. But I'm here to tell you it's not about what your body can endure. It's about what your mind can endure. It's about when your mind makes up the mind. Your mind is the strongest weapon you got. It's, it's not your fist. I don't care how strong you are. It doesn't matter how good your fighter you are. It doesn't matter. I, I've seen the biggest, strongest men get knocked out by the littlest dudes. Because it wasn't about what they had up here. It was what they knew to do down here. I know that if I hit him in this spot or I hit him in that spot or if I hit him here, I know that he's going down. It's, sometimes it's not a physical game. It's a mental game. Do you understand? And, and, and Mark of the Trust said, I recognized that it was a mental thing that I was dealing with. And he said, I decided that day on the beach that I had rather die on this beach than give up and quit and go on to the next thing. Do you all hear me today? Some of you got to make up a your mind that I would rather die preaching the gospel to you 50 people that come out today than throw in the towel and give up and say my vision's never going to come to pass. I'll never be big in this city. No one will ever come and hear me. I would rather give up and die preaching to you guys saying I know God's going to move for me. I know doors are going to open for me. I know our building is coming. I know God's going to raise me up in this city. I know my name is going to be known around this nation. I know that I'm going to travel the country and preach the God. I would rather die I up here speaking that out of my mouth then give up and say it's never going to happen. I'll never be what I thought I would be. I'll never do what I thought I would do. I'll never have what I thought I would have. I would rather die up here preaching the gospel than give you saying to you that I give up because I'll never give up. I'll never quit. If there's three of us in here, I'll preach until everybody is preached happy. If there's ten of us in here, I'll preach until you get the anointing. If there's a hundred in here, I'll preach until I can't preach no more because I would rather die knowing that I got a mission to accomplish knowing that I've been called I've been appointed then throw in the towel right here and say I never can do it I'll never be it I'll never have it do y'all hear me today hallelujah the same thing is true in our spiritual walk we need to understand that we are in a battle for our lives do y'all hear me today we, we are playing games, y'all. Carla said it perfectly. This isn't a game. We don't play church. We're not in playing games. We need to understand that we are in the battle of our lives. A battle for our families. A battle for our very soul. The enemy is going to throw everything he can at you to try to discourage you. He's going to throw everything he can at you to try to get you upset. He's going to try to throw everything he can at you to try to get you disappointed and wanting to give up. The real battle that's going on is not about your family. The battle isn't about the trouble in your family. It isn't about the financial problems you're facing. It isn't about the sickness that you're undertaking. It isn't about the problems on your marriage, the problems on your job, the problems with your finances. It's not about 
fight. Uh, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. We are not fighting a foe that is equal to us. We are greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And some of us have to get that inside of us and begin to understand that this is not a physical battle that I'm fighting. This is a mental battle that I'm fighting. And if my mind's not right, I'm going to miss out on the blessings of God. If my mind is not all in this, I'm going to miss out on what God has in, has in for me. we got to begin to say, I'm going forward. I got this. It doesn't matter what my circumstance looks like. It doesn't matter what my situation looks like. It doesn't matter who shows and who doesn't show. It matters what God has said I will be, I will be. What God said I will do, I will do. What God said I will have, I will have. What God said I am, I am. Do you hear me today? Somebody say I am. I am. We are. We are. The real battle that's going on is not about your family. See, some of you are putting so much focus on your finances and saying we're, we're struggling in this area, we're struggling in that area, we got this, and it's, it's not about that. It's about your mind. Because let me ask you this. How many of you went hungry last night? How many of you went hungry yesterday? How many went hungry? How many, how, how many are going hungry today? No, you, you're going to have some way that God's going to provide for you. Some way God's going to come through for you. It may not be always the way you want it to be, but God's a good God and he always comes through. He always comes through. The battle is not about your family. It's not about your finances. It's not about this. The battle is about your mind. What I'm trying to get you to understand tonight, today is that the battle, what the devil is really after is breaking down your mind. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to hear me today. I'm teaching. I'm not preaching, but y'all got to hear me today. The battle today is not about anything that you're facing. The battle is that the devil is trying to break down your mind. Some of you have had, almost have nervous breakdowns. Some of you have almost had, had these things that you almost lost it. That's the devil attacking your mind. When these things come into your mind, like, oh, this is what I need to do to myself. I need to harm myself. or I need to go do this to make money. I, I can't provide for my family like this. I need to go do these. this. This is a legal way to do this. No, no, no. That's a, the that's a devil messing with your mind. He's trying to break down your mind because he knows if I can get in your mind, I already got you. If I get your mind, I got you. If I get your mind, I got you right where I want you. Do you hear me today? And, and he wants to break you down mentally. He wants you to give up. He wants you to quit. He wants you to say, I can't take it anymore. To say, I'm not going to live this life anymore. I don't feel like taking a stand for Christ anymore. I don't feel like tithing anymore. I don't feel like giving anymore. I don't feel like coming to church anymore. I don't feel like doing this anymore. I don't feel like ushering anymore. I don't feel like doing the sound anymore. I don't feel like doing the praise and worship anymore. I don't feel like preaching anymore. It doesn't matter what you feel like. Sometimes you just got to get out and you got to do it. Do you hear me? Sometimes you got to put one foot ahead in the other and you got to say, I'm not doing this for man. I'm doing this for the glory of God because my reward doesn't come from man. Man can never reward you with enough. God is the rewarder to those that what? Diligently seek him. Let me say something about that. Diligently seeking him. Some people are wondering why they're not seeing the blessings on their lives. Because it doesn't say he's a reward of those that seek him. Some of us are seeking him when we feel like it. We're seeking him when we got time. I'll come to church once, twice a month, maybe. I'll show up if I need to. I'll tie them if I feel like it. I'll give if I want to give. I'll do if I want to do. If I want to do that, I'll do it. I won't. That's not diligently seeking him. Diligently is mean with everything inside of you, you're seeking after God. With every ounce, every fiber, everything in your being, I'm going after God. And the Bible says, I am a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. If you want to see the rewards, then diligently seek him. If you want to see the rewards on your job, the rewards in your marriage, the rewards in your finances, the rewards in this and that, then diligently seek him. Because I am a rewarder to those that diligently seek me. I'm going to let you understand today that you have to get the mindset that I'm going back and I'm not going to use my quit option. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm, going, I'm not going to ring the bell. I'm not going to grab the bell and say, I can't do this anymore. I, 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 and you can't be saying, I, I'm going to go back to drugs. I'm going to go back to alcohol. I'm going to go back to sick sin. I'm going to go back to the way it used to be because it used to be easier like that. 
I'm going to go back to, you know, to making my money like this because it was easier like that. I, I just don't want to fight anymore. I just don't want to, I don't want the pressure anymore. I can't do this anymore. And my job today, and before we leave, and I'm, we're, I'm probably 10 minutes and I'll be done, honestly, but my job today before we leave here today is to convince you to remove forever from your mind the option of quitting. That's my job today. That today, before we leave here, you remove forever the option of quitting is not an option. In other words, it's not an option. It's not a quitting is not an option. Do you hear me today? You have to make up your mind. If you ever reach the place, you will make up your mind today that I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to give up on my marriage. I'm not going to give up on my children. I'm not going to give up on my job. I'm not going to give up on my business. I'm not going to give up on my God. I'm not going to give up on my tithing. I'm not going to give up on my attendance. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up on serving God. I'm not going to give up. That is when the battle really is won. Do you hear me today? The battle is won. When you make up your mind to I made up my mind. I made up my mind. I don't care. I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm not going to say give up. I'm not going to retreat. God didn't let me put me on this team to be a loser. I am a winner. I am the head and I'm not the tail. I am above and I'm not beneath. I am the lender and I'm not the borrower. I'm at the front of the line and not the back of the line. I am getting promoted and not demoted. Do you hear me today? I'm seeing increase and not decrease. I'm getting peace and not hate. Do you understand? I've made up my mind. The Bible says in Hebrew 10.39, but we are not of them who draw back. My God. We are not of them who draw back. I love this scripture because so many Christians start out so strong. Do you hear me? So many Christians start out so strong. They get saved and they start out strong and then they lose it a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. They start out on fire for God, but somewhere along the way, they enter into their own hell week and trouble starts taking place. Somewhere along the way, you were going to church every week. You had it. You were going. You had it. You were serving. You were doing. You were this. You were that. And then somewhere along the way, that's why I, I start worrying about people when they start missing one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, because it's very hard. People will tell you, I'm coming back, I'll be back, I'll be back. But many times, when we get out of that routine and we get out of that habit of going to church, then you know, it's easy for us to get out of the habit of getting back to going to church. That's why when I look, and I'm not trying to embarrass her, but, and if I do, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll apologize later, but I look at like Samantha back there. I look at Samantha, and she has thrown herself into God. She's coming to those discipleship classes. She, she, she cares. when she, If she missed one, she, she wants to be there. I'm telling you, I look at people like that, that when they come in and they give everything that they got to God, that's what God is looking for. That's what, and I'm just using her. There's many of you like that, but I'm just looking. That's someone new that's come in recently, and, and I look at her, and I think to myself, man, that's what we need. We need people that want the desire of more of God because you can't there's no weird that in, you can't get enough of God and you never have too much of God you can have too much food right <laughs> you can have too much of people how many of you know that uh, yeah <laughs> I can have too much of you but you can never have too much of God and when I see people like that because that's how people that get saved and stay on fire for God and it doesn't dwindle down when they throw themselves in and they say okay I'll be there for the for this I'll be there for that I'll be there for this and that is how it happens and they make up their mind that quitting is not an option quitting is not something that I have a, it's not even I've erased it from my mind and I love this scripture reader where it says be but we are not of them who draw back Rick we're not those that give up we're not those that quit we're not those we press on for a greater prize Paul talked about that right when we press on for the mark we press on it doesn't say I, I backtrack to the mark it says Kathy says I press on towards the goal I press on even along the way if there's trouble I'm still pressing on even along the way if there's issues I'm still pressing on even along the way if somebody hurts my feelings I'm still pressing on even along the way if I got sick I'm still pressing on and that is what we have to do we have to say God no matter what happens no matter what the, the, the fire that was put 
inside of me when I got saved, the fire that was in me when I was on fire for God, even if hell week comes my way, even if misery comes my way, even if sickness comes my way, and trouble begins taking place to my left and my right, it doesn't matter. We have to remember, we are not in this for, for what I can get out of God. We are not in this for what I can get out of church. We are not even in this for what I can get out of Jesus. I am in this because he loved me first and he gave himself for me. And if he never answers another prayer for me, and if he never does another, I'm, that's better than y'all, amen. If he never answers another prayer for me, if he never moves for me again, he's done enough that I shall praise him all the days of my life. And if he never does anything, I have nothing to do that I will ever quit. I will ever give, go back. My worst day with Jesus is better than my best day in the world without him. If you feel that way, give God a hand of praise. Come on. If you feel that way, if you feel that my worst day with Jesus is better than my best day without him, it's better. Amen. It's better. Amen. 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 In Acts chapter 20, Paul was speaking to the Ephesian church and he said, I was serving the Lord with many tears and I was serving the Lord with many temptations. Anybody ever been there? Let's be honest and, and not be the saintly group. Anybody ever been there and you've been serving God with many temptations in your life? You're still serving him, but you got temptations. I mean, if, if we don't raise our hand, we're liars. Because <laughs> every one of us are tempted. Well, you're the pastor. You shouldn't say you're tempted. Every one of us are tempted. That's the devil's job. That's what he's out there trying. He is roaming the earth, seeing who he can devour. So he is, if you think he's especially not after you who are in church, trying to tempt you, to lead you down the wrong path, to get you off course to where you're supposed to go. And Paul was talking about how even as I was serving the Lord with many tears, anybody been serving God with many tears? You're serving him. Uh, the, the, you don't know how the bills are going to get paid, but you're serving him with tears coming down your face. You're serving him. You don't know how the, that you're going to pay your mortgage, but you're, you're, you're committed to paying your tithes. Anybody ever been there? I've been there. I've been there. But let me tell you something. God always comes through because it says, give first to me and everything else shall be added unto you. You give first to God and everything else will line up. And, I, and, I, and I'm not just, just in the mess that has nothing to do with tithing, but I am here to tell you this. I'm an example of that because there's times when I did not know what we were going to do or how we were going to survive. And I said, God, but still me and I would write out our check. Still we would get our cash out of the ATM. Still I would bring it to church and say, God, I give you this. And ever, I've never once has my family ever gone homeless. Never once has my family ever gone without. We've always been blessed because we put God first. It says, if you give to me first, I shall add everything else unto you. And so, even if he never did anything, again, I'm going to praise him. But in Acts 20, he's saying, I, I was serving Latasha with many temptations. Because if I was serving with many troubles, I was serving with many pains, I was serving with many tears, and there were people who were just waiting on me to fall. <laughs> Anybody know that? Just wait. People are just looking, waiting for you to mess up, waiting for you to slip up, waiting for you to lose it all. And he goes on in Acts 20 to say, and beyond that, the Holy Ghost witnessed to me that in every city there would be afflictions. Wow. That's pretty sad. There was nothing but trouble in every city that Paul was going to. But he goes on to say in Acts 20, verse 24, none of these things, listen to this, this is so good. Now listen to what I just said. He said, Carla, he said, every city I went to, there was problems. Tony, every place I went, there was a I went to Orlando, there was problems. I went to Chattanooga, there was problems. I went to Los Angeles, there was problems. I went to Las Vegas, there was problems. I went to, 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 to wherever it is, there was problems. I couldn't run from the problems, Terry. I, I couldn't get away from the problems. Everywhere I went, there was problems, he says. And then he says, None of these things, in Acts 20, verse 24, none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I may finish my course with joy. None of these things move me. None of these things made me ring the bell. None of these things made me to give up. Neither count my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. 
Paul was saying here, I've made up my mind. I will never, ever, ever quit, Jasmine. I will never, ever, ever quit, Kenan. Rita, no matter what, I will never quit. You mean, Pastor, aren't you kind of disappointed? Last week you had almost 100 and today, woo, Jesus, what's going on? I will never, ever, 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 never, 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 ever, never, 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 ever, never, never, ever quit. I will keep on because I stand on the promises of God that are yes and amen. And if God said he's going to do it, either I got two options. I can begin to call God a liar and say, God, you lied about this, or I can stand and know that it's coming. And I am by no means ready to start calling God a liar. So you got two options. You can either begin to say, God, it's never going to happen. You lied to me about this. Or you can stand and plant your feet solid and say, I will never give up on the dreams and the promises and the vision of God. I will never throw in the towel and I will never quit. Paul said, I've made up my mind. I will never ring the bell. I will never quit. In this world, you will have personal persecution. In this world, you will have trouble. In this world, you will have situations. In this world, you will have relationships that are messed up. In this world, you will have financial problems. In this world, you will get doctor's reports you don't like. In this world, people will backstab you, betray you, be snakes in the grass, and turn on you. In this world we live, there will be a lot of issues, but we are not a bunch of victims. We are not a bunch of victims. We are not a bunch of beat up, beat down miserable people. We are people who have strong minds. We are people that have strong will. We are people that have strong determination. We are people that serve a strong and mighty God. We are people that got a God inside of us. And one of these days, when Jesus appears, our words are with him. Do you hear me today? We are not quitters. Everybody say, say I'm not a quitter. I will not give up. Never. Ever will I give up? Turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28 says this. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. Listen to this. Are they servants of Christ? I'm out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I've worked much harder. Listen, here's what I want you to hear, okay? I want you to hear all this. Everybody listen and look. Watch this. He says, I've worked much harder. I've been in prison more frequently. I've been flogged. That means I've been whipped severely. I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger from the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I've labored and toiled and have gotten, got, and often gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and I've been naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressures of my concern for all the churches. <laughs> That's Paul. <laughs> you would think at this point, Kim, he would say, enough is enough. I've gone through enough. You would think at this point, this man would say, it's time for me to ring the bell. It's time for me to give up. You would think he would say, I've been through too much. I've been through so much pain. I've been through much betrayal. I've had more than my fair share of problems. I think I'll just check out. I think I'll just give up. I didn't sign up for all this, Paul would say. I didn't know that I would have to suffer all this pain that I'm having to go through. But here's the thing about Paul. There was no quit in that man. There was no quit. It wasn't, it wasn't in his vocabulary. He didn't know how to say the word, I give up, I quit. He was the one who said, forgetting those things which are behind me 
and reaching forward to those things ahead. Amen. He's the one that said, forgetting the things that I've been through, forgetting the relationships that didn't go right, forgetting the, 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 the misery that I went through, forgetting the financial troubles, forgetting the jobs that didn't work out, forgetting, 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 but going forward and reaching for the vision that God has given me and reaching for the promotion that is ahead and reaching for the supernatural healing that is coming to my body and reaching for the relationships that God is going to bring into my life. How could he say this? How could Paul say this? Rick, how could Paul say it? Garrett, how could Paul say that? Cody, how could he say that I'm forgetting what's behind me, but I'm going forward to the things that are ahead of me? How could he say that? Because Paul had removed the option of quitting out of his mind. He had said, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. There's nothing that they can do to me because I know on the other side of this thing is my blessing. I know that I give up right now. See, some of you are so close to your blessing and you're so close to your breakthrough and you're so close to your financial uh, uh, miracles and you're so close to the healing in your body and you're so close to the relationship that God has ordained for you. But the enemy is coming in like a roaring lion trying to mess with your mind and trying to say, why do you keep doing this? You're never going to get a job, Tommy. Terry, the man of God's never going to come for you. Huh? What do you mean kids? Ain't going to happen for you. Jasmine, how do you think God's going to turn that thing around for you? Rick, do you really think that God's going to bless that? TJ, do you really think your business is going to be what God called it to be? Rita, do you really think supernatural healing's coming for you? Carla, do you really think the divine can? That's what the enemy is trying to get your mind to start saying. He's trying to get your mind to think and see, I, you'll never be it. You'll never have it. But I came to serve notice to that devil today and to tell him that in you is great that in you is strength that in you is power that in you is a is supernatural miracle that in you is blessed that in you is a marriage to a man of God that's going to love you that in you is a job that's coming your way that in you is the children that you're believing for that in you is your grandma's complete and total healing that in you is complete and total healing that in you is your business successful and being everything you're ordained to be that is in you your business taking off like never before that in you divine connections are coming your way. Promotion is coming your way. If anybody believes that, will you tell the Lord amen? Will you give the Lord a head of praise? Will you say, I believe it today. I believe it today. I believe it. You got to begin to say, it's not an option for me. Say it. Say, it's not an option for me. I'm not turning around now. I've come too far. Hallelujah. That's why Paul could say that. You may be seated three minutes and I'm done, but you may be see, that's why Paul could say that. He could say because he got rid of the option of quitting. He said, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. God said the healing is coming. God said the miracles are coming. God said, Tana, you, that the, the, the business is going to be successful and you're going to have everything you dream for and you believe for and you're you standing upon. God said it. If God said it, who are you to debate with God? If God said it, who are you to argue with God? How come it is, and I know I've said this, so, but I like to repeat myself sometimes. There may be some new people that never heard it. How come it is that we can stand and believe for somebody else's miracle to happen? And I'll stand here with Rita, and I'll believe with everything in me. I know she's healed. She walks in divine healing. That God, you are touching her body from the top of her head. She's walking the best day of her life. I can stand here with TJ and believe that I believe right now that his business is going to go around this world. That ever, but then when it comes to you, that, oh well, hmm, I don't know if he can do it for me. I, I believe God's going to. Well, I don't know if I should say, give me one of the biggest churches. I believe God's going to bless me. How come it is we can stand for other people and we really believe it? But when it comes to us, like God's not big enough to, me to, me to make your miracle come to pass. Like God's not big enough to turn your dream around. Like God's not big enough to bless you. He can do it for somebody else. He can do it for you. He can do it for you. Can it for you. Hallelujah. Paul went on to say in 2 Timothy 1.12, he said, I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. This is the point you have to get to and you have to be persuaded. 
You have to make a persuasion. Persuasion means I've made up my mind. I'm not going any other way. I'm, I'm, my, my mind is made up. My mind's made up. I'm not going back. That is the point you've got to understand. Lord, nothing is going to change my mind. I will never, ever ring that bell. I will never, ever ring that bell. Praise God. Guys, it's all about finishing the course. Others have been where you've been. Others have gone through what you've gone through. Others have made it through what you're going through today. And they made it out smiling. And they made it out victorious. And they made it out with victory on the other side. Are you going to quit? Are you going to give up? Are you going to forfeit the dreams? Here's the thing. You've got to remember this. If God doesn't use you and you don't allow him to use you, he's going to raise up somebody to do it. Because God is not determined or controlled by what you and I do. So guess what? If I say I give up, I'm, I'm, I'm just forgetting this church. I can't do this anymore. It's frustrating. People came last week. They don't come this week. If I just give up, then you think God's not going to raise somebody else to, to do what, I, what he wanted me to do in this city? Because it's not contingent upon a person. What God said he's going to do, he's going to do. So if why not you and why not now? Why not you and why not this time? I'm telling you today that somebody has been going through something just like you and they didn't ring the bell. So you don't need to quit either. Do you hear me? You don't need to allow the enemy to cause you to take the option of ringing the bell and giving up. You have to say in your spirit, I am never, never, never going to quit. There comes a time when the process weeds out everyone who has made up their mind to quit. The process is designed to weed you out. Do you all hear me? The process the enemy takes you to through is designed to make you quit. That's what he wants is to make you give up. See, some of you that may be here today, right now you may be living for the Lord, but you aren't really going through anything. You're really, everything's hunky-dory and wonderful and rainbows and lollipops and, and beautiful roses. If your mind isn't made up when the real battle comes, though, you will fall. Because it will come. Maybe everything's wonderful for you right now. That's great. But the battle will come. And if your mind's not made up that I'm not going to ring the bell, then you will fall. You have to have the kind of determination that says, I will not quit. I will not give up. No matter how hard may things may get, no matter how difficult my marriage may be, no matter how bad my finances may work, no matter who loves me and who doesn't love me, no matter who supports me and who doesn't support me, no matter who gives and who doesn't give, no matter who comes and who doesn't come, I will not give up. You have to make up your mind. And during this time when the fight is on you, you've branded in your mind, I will not quit. I will not ring the bell. I will not give up. I will not quit. Sometimes you have to convince yourself though. You got to keep saying it. You got to wake up every morning and say, I will not give up. I will not quit. And you got to keep on walking. I will not give up. I will not quit until your step gets a little better. I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not quit. And by the time you know it, you've removed the quit option out of your blind. And you said, it's not even an option for me to get. Oh, this little problem, this is nothing. I made it through a lot difficult time at this. And this is nothing compared to what I'm going through. Do you hear me today? I've made up my mind. I will not quit. Do you hear me? <laughs> Hebrews 12, 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus, my God, Jesus endured everything that was thrown at him. He endured the whip. He endured the beating until ribbons of flesh were falling off his back. He endured the pounding on his face, the spitting and accusations, the slaps of the palms across their face, the denials by people that said they loved him like Peter and Judas. He endured the nails that stretched him across the cross. 
He endured the nails that went into his hands and went into his feet. He endured. And through all his pain and through all his agony and through all his problems, he never once rang the bell. Y'all know Jesus could have rang the bell. Don't ever think inside of you, Jesus had to do that for me. No, Jesus chose to do that for you. Jesus didn't have to do anything. Jesus could have called upon 10,000 angels and they'd have been there to rescue him like that. Jesus went through it all for you and I and he never once rang the bell. All he had to do was ring the bell and like I said, 10,000 angels, you can go ahead and start playing, Tony. 10,000 angels would have come and rescued him off the cross. But something in him said, I have to finish this race. Something in him, stand to your feet. Something in him said, I have to finish this thing. I made up my mind back at the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, God. Not my will. But your will be done. And when they put the crown of thorns upon his head, and when they stabbed him, in the side. He cried. It is finished. Because Jesus. Had run the course. He had run the race. Some of us are trying to. Give up before our time even is to give up. Jesus finished his race for you and I. So that we could run the race and be victorious. He was saying to God when he said, I'm finished, TJ. He was saying, I've done what God told me to do. That's how I feel today. So what? People didn't show up. Some people didn't show up. I'm still doing what God told me to do. They don't want it. They don't, they're, not, they're not desperate like Carl said. They're not desperate for it. So what? Because you are desperate for it. And if just us are desperate for it, I'll keep running my race. I'll keep running the race. When you get into your battle, when you get into your struggle, when it's you going through your hell week, will you now begin to consider Jesus? Will you begin to consider Jesus when tomorrow starts off bad and the boss yells at you and Monday, Tuesday starts off bad because the money's not in the account or because your kids disrespected you or didn't treat you right and you want to now really hurt them. <laughs> but will you begin to say, no, I'm not going to let this ruin my week. I'm not going to let this destroy what God wants to do in me this week. Will you begin to consider Jesus and how he wouldn't quit and how he wouldn't ring the bell and how he endured? See, guys, when you remove the quit option out of your life, you'll be amazed what you can actually handle and work through. When you remove the quit option, when you say, it's not an option in my life to quit. It's not a, a divorce is not a word in our vocabulary. Me and I may fight. We've had two fights in our lives. I'm just kidding. We may fight, but divorce isn't an option. It's not an option for us. We're working through it. We're gonna, it doesn't matter. We're going to work through it. And that's what you've got to get to. You've got to get in your mind that it's not an option to quit. Your job's hard. But how do you not know that the boss is watching you, ready to promote you, and just seeing if you can endure another week, another month? Yeah, the, the, the health report's bad and it didn't, it's not with the one you wanted. But how do you know that God's not watching you just to say, I just did this just to see what you're, you're, what, what's going to come out of your mouth because I'm about to heal you on the other side of this thing. You've got to take it out of your mind that quitting is an option. It's not an option for me. Jesus said it like this in Luke 9.62. He said, if any man having put his hand to the plow looks back he is not fit for the kingdom of God don't miss what I just said y'all 
Don't miss what I just said. Luke 9.62 says, If any man having put his plant hand to the plow, meaning any man having worked and gone out and been going after a vision, going after a dream, but he is not fit, but, but he looks back and says, I can't do it anymore. You're not fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, if you're a quitter, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. That means if you've ever started out serving the Lord and you get to the point in your life where you say, I don't like this anymore. If you ever started out tithing and you get to the point where you say, I don't want to do this anymore. If you ever started out serving God and, and, and living for him and, and avoiding all the sins that were what's in your life, but now you've kind of backtracked a little bit and gone back to them. Maybe you used to not drink and now you started drinking again. Maybe you used to not smoke and you started smoking again. Maybe you knew, used to not talk like that and you started talking like that again. Maybe it's time that you say, I'm not looking back because if I look back, I'm not fit for the kingdom of God. I've got to put my hand to the plow and you got to keep on keeping on. I don't like the pressure. I don't like saying no to sin. It's too hard. People are watching me and people around me. Maybe you're around the wrong people then. Let me say that again. People around me are doing this, and people around me are doing that, and they're all talking like this, and they're all doing that. Maybe you are around the wrong people, and you need to separate. The Lord said, remove yourself from certain things. Remove yourself from certain people. I'm tired of being alone on Friday nights. I'm tired of, of not being able to go to the bar and hit the club with my family and my friends and go out. I don't like going to church. I don't like serving God. Jesus said, if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Today, you have to remove the option of quitting. And do not ring the bell. Do not ring the bell. It's not an option. It's not an option. Every head bowed and every eye closed in here today. Every here today and you say, first of all, I never want to close a service without getting the opportunity to get right with Jesus. You're here and you say, Pastor Ryan, I, 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 I'm not living for God. Maybe I've never accepted as my Savior, or maybe I have, but I've fallen away, and I'm not living for him right now. Will you just pray with me and let me accept him as my Savior or let him come back into my life? I need Jesus more than anything because the whole reason I'm wanting to quit is because I'm not right with Jesus. The whole reason I'm wanting to give up is because I'm not living right, I'm not doing right, I'm not acting right, I'm not being right. If you're here, say, I, 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 Lord, I need you right now. I need, to come, I need you to come into my life. I need to get right with Jesus. I've never accepted him or I have, but I've fallen away. If you're here and that's you, I want to see your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Right now, let me see your hand. Anybody here? Anybody here? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Ryan, this message was for me. This message for me, I need to hear this because I've been going through, I love God, I serve God, I'm, I'm saved, if I died, I'm going to heaven. But the enemy's trying to attack me time after time to give up, trying to attack me to give up on the vision, trying to attack me to give up on the dream, trying to attack my mind. He's not attacking my body because he knows that I can overcome anything because I've overcome this and I've overcome that, but he's going after my mind. He's going after my mind. He's trying to get me to say, give up on this dream, give up on this vision. Or you're here today and the enemy's been trying to get you to ring the bell. And you say, this message was for me. I needed to hear this, Pastor Ryan. I needed to hear the story about Marcus Luttrell and how the guys can give up and, and, and they don't have to answer any questions. And all I, I need to hear all that. If you say, that's me. If you say, that's me today. This was for me. Let me see your hand all over this place. All over this place. My hand's up. My hand's up. I felt like quitting. I felt like giving up before. Right now, every head hand lifted in this place. I want you to lift your hands as a sign of surrender. And I'm going to pray over you. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, remove the option of quitting out of our vocabulary. Whether it's over our business, whether it's over our marriage, whether it's over relationships, whether it's over our jobs, whether it's over our tithing, whether it's over our coming to church, whether it's over serving in the church, whether it's over whatever it is, God, remove it from me. Because I'm not a quitter, God. You didn't raise no quitters on your team. And today it's not an option for me to give up. It's not an option for me to throw in the towel. It's not an option for me to ring the bell. Because I know on the other side of this trouble, on the other side of this adversity, on the other side of this issue is my breakthrough. On the other side of this problem is my promises. On the other side of this thing is my vision. And I know that if I give up now, I'll never get to where God wants me to go. I'll never be 
see who God called me to be. I'll never see the man of God, the woman of God walk into my life. I'll never see be able to hold the newborn baby in my hands. I'll never walk into the new job. My business will never do what it's supposed to do. I'll never see the divine connections that I'm believing for. My marriage will never be healed. My relationship will never be right. I'll never be able to do it. But God, I declare to this day that when you, the enemy starts attacking my mind with giving up and that I'll never have this and I'll never be this and I'll never do this. I'll just remember the power and the strength and what Jesus endured at the cross for me. That when he was beaten and when he was whipped and when he was he was spit upon and when he was stabbed in the side and when nails were nailed into his hands and nails were nailed to his feet. He didn't quit. And if he didn't quit, God, I will not quit. I will not give up on the promises. For I know that the promises are yes and amen. For I know that, God, you're going to do what you said you would do. For I know, God, that you are raising me up to be a light in the city. That you are raising me up to be a light on my job. That you are raising me up to be a light in my family. And God, this day, let us remember this. And let us not forget. As we take this time to remember on Memorial Day what the soldiers did for us. Let us also not forget what Jesus did for us. We bless you. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on. Come on. We can do better than that. I didn't say give your favorite team a hand of praise. I didn't say give the give a gospel a hand of praise. Give Jesus a hand of praise, Jasmine. Hallelujah. It's not an option. Come on, say it's not an option. Say it's not an option. Say it's not an option. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good all the time. And, you know, Pastor Ryan, Hold on. talked about so good. Here it's on now. You know, God, he's not interested in obedience because, just because it's written right here on the pages of his book. He's, and like Carla said this morning when she was praying, God's not interested in um, you serving, coming here and doing your duties just because Pastor Ryan's here today. Or getting early here because you know he's in town. Have you ever worked at a job where uh, the boss is there and everybody is on task? We're all early. Everybody's early. But we know he's going to be gone. And what happens usually? People are late. TJ, at the garage, you're there. I'm, I'm sure it looks a lot different when you're there than when you're not. April, your classroom at school, Do that, are those kids different when you walk out of the room than we walk on? Well, listen, God said he, you know why Jesus died? He died because we, so that we didn't have to be ruled by that kind of mentality. Uh, about punishment. Jesus died so that the Holy Spirit can be in us so that we can be ruled by the Holy Spirit so that we can make the decisions not because somebody's looking or watching but because out of our love it's our obedience because of God <laughs> thank you thank you but you know I was so I was at a celebrate recovery meeting the other night and there was it was a group session and there was about seven girls from one of the girls uh uh, rehab places and they were you know they were all excited they were glad they've been doing good in their recovery they were talking about it they were so excited until they start talking about what am I going to do when I get out I don't know what I'm going to do uh, they were so scared to death because they said when I step out of that bus and I'm not under the people that have been put over me to tell me when I had to go pray and when I had to eat and when I had to show up and when I had to do do this what am I going to do because I got to make decisions on my own what am I going to do but God said greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world so he's given every single person here the same responsibility and the same excuses we can either say you know I, I I'm doing this I'm observing what the Bible says why because I love God or we can say well you know it was good yesterday, or it, it, that was good for a season. Right. But like, like Pastor Ryan's saying, you know, we don't, we don't get the option. We don't need the option to quit. We really don't need to give ourselves the excuses of, well, you know, I'm just going to do it today because today's good. We, we even should give ourselves the privilege of saying, you know what? No, God, it, God died on a cross for me. Right. And that has given me the responsibility and the ability to be strong enough in myself to serve him, no matter who's looking or what's, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. 
And so today, even as we give, we need to give with that mentality of I'm not quitting. I'm doing this not because Pastor Ryan told me to or because Mia said that, you know, this is what I should be doing. I'm doing this for me and for my God and for my own salvation. So if you need an envelope, you can raise your hand and um, the ushers will be there. Amen. How many of you enjoyed that service, that service today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. I hope y'all will get that CD and listen to it. I really think everybody should get this. I really do. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say this. If you can't afford the CD, the $3 CD, I'll give it to you for free. Because I truly believe, and I know that's not one of my fiery, like, preach you down, shout you down messages, but that message is something that we all are going to go through. We're all going to go through it. I don't care how, how uh, uh, mature you are. I don't care how masculine you are, how manly you are. We all are going to go through times in our life where we want to just say, I can't do this anymore. This is too much. I can't, I can't continue. And I, so I believe in this message so much that I preach today, that if you cannot afford the $3, I will give it to you for free. But I want you to take it. Please take me up on this because I, I believe in this message. I believe we all need to hear this because it, maybe it's not today and maybe it's not next week and maybe it's not next month and, and maybe it's not next year. But at some point in your life, you're going to be faced with the quit option. You're going to be faced with the situation where you can quit. And if you quit, you'll never get to where God desired to take you to. Amen. If you have your offering ready, stand up to your feet. You're tied to the ready. Stand at your feet and let's do this. To do a confession over it, and then we will we will uh, go back to our seats and then we'll be dismissed. Praise the Lord. Say this when we say, Father God, Father God I, give you I give you my whole tithe on my offering today. Lord, I thank you that as I give, I already know it's coming back to me. Press down, shake it together, and run it over. Lord, maybe I'm one who felt like quitting on, on giving, on tithing, on sowing. But today, but this day, I declare I will not give up because I know the promises of God are yes and amen. And if you said you'll do it, you will do it. So blessings, favor, Increase is coming my way. I will not quit. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring it up with a pep in your step and then go back to your seat and then we'll be dismissed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Big Fizz, that's a song in the making over there. It's not an option. <laughs> it's not an option. I like that song. It's not an option. <laughs> I, st- I wanted to sing it myself, but I can't sing, you know. So. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have y'all enjoyed church today? I thought it was wonderful. I know we were missing many, but praise and worship did an awesome job. Uh, the guys doing communion did an awesome job. The usher served with excellency. I just thought it was awesome. I thought it was an awesome service. I bless you guys. Remember. <laughs> I want you to keep playing with that. <laughs> I just wanted to do that. No, but remember, if you need a CD, I'm serious. If you can't afford the $3 CD, I will give it to you for free. I want everybody in here to take one. I believe in this message. I believe you need to hear this message. That's number one. Number two, please sign up for the baptismal back there, July the 20, whatever it is, 4th or 5th, uh, 3 p.m. Please sign up so we can start getting everything prepared for that. Also, remember, there's no discipleship class this tomorrow. Enjoy your Memorial Day. Remember those who gave their lives, those that sacrificed. Thank a veteran. Hug a veteran. Thank them for their service. I love you guys. I will see you guys on Sunday morning morning 11 a.m. I'm sure everybody will be back so I expect to see you too. God bless you. Praise God boys. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen. I like it. Keep going Kenan. Go back to that. None. Whatever you're doing.